to educate you and to tell you about the case of the client and about the applicable law. At least in High Court and Supreme Court, the facts have already been, you see, enumerated. They have been settled by the trial court. And High Court and Supreme Court are, at, at Supreme Court level at least, I say, they are only concerned with the question of law. In High Court, in first appeal, you can, you see, assail the facts, decision on facts. In second appeal, you can't do that also. And it is only pure question of law. In Supreme Court, they are mostly questions of law. What Article 142 says? It says that law laid down by Supreme Court shall be applicable throughout the country. Why? Because it is presumed that Supreme Court lays down the law. So if you see Supreme Court judges, to my knowledge, reach there after 30 to 35 year experience, either as advocate or as high court judges. After 35 year experience of practicing and propagating law, if they are so helpless that they cannot proceed in a case unless advocate is there, then God save this country. And that is what is happening in our judicial reforms. Law provides that not more than three adjournments shall be given in a case throughout the life of the case to one party. So maximum adjournments in any case can be six, three by one party, three by other party. There will not be any case in which minimum number of adjournments had not been six. I'm not talking of maximum. So this is how, you see, law proceeds. So, when we talk of law reforms, what we have to reform? You see, you make the, you see, legislature can only pass law. <coughs> and it is to be implemented by who? By judges, by advocates. And the manner in which it is being implemented shows that we are not serious about law reforms. We do not want laws to be reformed because we have vested interest. Now coming to the problem being faced by the organizations which have, you see, organized this uh, conference about gender bias. See, gender bias is a very common thing. Some people are inclined to one person, uh, either women, others are inclined to men. It will be very rare that you will find a judge without bias. If you go to court, you will find that judges are branded, he is pro-talent, he is pro land art, he is pro labor. He is pro-industry, he is pro-business, he is anti-business, he is pro-this party, he is pro-this party, he is pro-advocates, he is pro-this. Why is branding is done? I am not talking of other kind of branding, I am talking of bias branding. There are other kinds of branding also which are there you find in courts. So, why this branding is there? See, everybody carries on his shoulder the burden of his lifestyle. It is very difficult that you shed off this burden and train yourself in a manner that you are really a judge. The difficulty is that judges keep carrying this burden and this burden is reflected in their judgments. You read judgments of Justice Krishna here. You will find that he throughout his career as a judge carried the burden of communism on his shoulder. And his effort was to put communist ideology and philosophy in every judge. You will find, go to other extreme, you will find 
capitalist world where you will find in judgments that burden of capitalism being there. So, this bias is an inbuilt in every man. And the effort of every judge must be to shed off this burden. And this, you will find, is a rare phenomenon. Maybe there, there are cases where people give judgments without philosophy. And they are not considered good judges. Why? Because people want to search in the judgment some innovative philosophies. I don't know why. Instead of decisions, you see those judgments. Why can Justice Krishna his judgments are appreciated more? Oh, he wrote so much paragraphs on this philosophy. He must such and such judge wrote so much uh, uh, see paragraphs uh, elucidating on this philosophy. So when you elucidate philosophies, you are a great judge. If you have no philosophy, you are not a great judge. So many people want to be great judges. And that is, you see, that is why that burden is carried deliberately also. That look, how much deep I know. So, the, you see, that kind of philosophical inclination is there. So, this kind of inclination you will find in judges. <coughs> then, we also suffer from inertia, status quo. And we do not want to change the things. Because we think the system is good. You talk to anybody that this adversarial system, this adversarial system, this, this system we carried and we inherited from British. There are two kinds of systems in Europe, common law system and civil law system. And we have, we, adopted common law system. And in common law system, adversarial system is a, we consider this as the best. Any effort made by anyone to dilute this and to bring some aspects of civil law system are looked upon as if some sin is being done. If you remember, Malimath Committee report was there. This report was about judicial reforms and in criminal justice system. He wanted to introduce a simple procedure in criminal law that every accused, when he pleads not guilty, shall also give his defense. He shall enumerate his defense. What is his defense? He may say, I was not present on the spot. He may say, I had not committed crime because of these reasons, which is my defense. And some kind of written statement was asked, was to be given by an accused. This was a suggestion. So the whole bar and the whole bench and the parliament stood up against Malimath, Justice Malimath's report, saying that, no, no, no. This is not possible that we should introduce from back door civil law system. How can the accused be presumed guilty? There is no presumption of guilt. You are saying, please say that you give a written statement in response to the charge sheet and explain what is your defense. But this was, you see, turned down and just the report was criticized day in, day at night, despite all seminars. So we want, we do not want to disturb ourselves. And we want to live in an inertia that this system is good. What we are doing is good. If this is good, then why it is not serving the purpose? See, what is the measure of a system being effective? The system is effective, it, it works effectively. If it delivers, a system which does not deliver, however charming it may look from the philosophy point of view, 
cannot be considered as a good system. Now, what is the delivery record of our system? The oldest case, criminal case, to my knowledge, pending in trial court, is 35 years old. Criminal case. And oldest civil case <coughs> pending in courts is a Yodhya trial, which is more than 60 years old. 